हेलो चिल्ड्रन वेलकम टू अनदर सेशन ऑफ साइंस क्लास फोर टुडे वी विल अंडरस्टैंड लेसन ट्वेल्व एयर वाटर एंड वेदर एंड विल सॉल्व एक्सरसाइज ऑफ लेसन ट्वेल्व दिस लेसन विल हेल्प यू टू नेम एंड आइडेंटिफाई डिफरेंट टाइप्स ऑफ वेदर to understand what causes different types of weather and what is the role of sun and to learn about importance of water and water cycle so let's understand what is weather one of the first thing many people do when they wake up in the morning is check the weather because the weather pattern where you live will help you and your parents to decide what you should wear or bring to school that day and a weather pattern occurs when the weather stays the same for few days or a weeks at a time and there are a few different weather patterns that you may already know about such as hot and dry wet and rainy or cold so let me explain this common weather patterns in more detail for example hot and dry weather so during summer and spring the weather pattern is commonly hot and dry and in the summer temperatures are usually very high and if you go outside with your ice cream or something else on a hot summer day it may melt maybe you have observed that so during this pattern of weather people try to stay cool by using air conditioning or going for a swim then another weather pattern is cold weather so during winter the weather pattern is cold and temperatures are usually the lowest and this weather patterns means there might be snow coming because of the low temperature so when the weather pattern is cold people wear hats sweaters jackets to keep their body warm now let's understand about sun and its role so as you know the sun is the closest star to earth and it's the source of all the heat and light on the earth and even life would not exist without sun even it is also the center of a solar system and by far its largest object now let's understand what is revolution so revolution is often used as synonym for rotation but in many field of science like astronomy and its related subject revolution is referred to as an orbital revolution It means that it is used when one body moves around another while rotation is used to mean the movement around the axis for example the moon revolves around the earth and the earth revolves around the sun so this movement of the earth around the sun in a fixed path is called a revolution so the earth revolves from west to east in anti clockwise direction and the earth completes one revolution around the sun in one year or in 365 days 
सिक्स आवर्स एंड नाइन मिनट एंड हियर द सिक्स आर एंड नाइन मिनट्स एंड अप टू अबाउट एन एक्स्ट्रा डे एवरी फोर्थ ईयर एंड विच इज डिजाइंड एज अ लीप ईयर विद द एक्स्ट्रा डे एडेड एज ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ फेब्रुआरी सो वी कैन से दैट वाइल द अर्थ इज रोटेटिंग ऑन इट्स एक्जिस it also orbits the sun and it takes a little more than 365 days for the earth to make a complete trip around the sun and other planets have different orbital times suppose it takes only 87 days for mercury to orbit the sun but 12 years for jupiter to make the journey now let's understand what is rotation so as you know the earth moves in two different ways like earth revolves around the sun once a year and rotates on its axis once a day when the earth's orbit makes a circle around the sun at the same time the earth revolves around the sun it also spins and in science we call that rotating on its axis and since the earth revolves the sun and rotates on its axis at the same time we experience seasons day and night and changing shadow throughout the day even maybe you have observed that from earth the sun looks like it moves across the sky in the day time and appears to disappear at night and this is because the earth is spinning towards the east this means that to us here on earth the sun appears to rise in the east in the morning and climb higher and higher in the sky towards midday and in the afternoon the sun then seems to move lower and lower in the sky before setting in the west so as earth rotates it seems like the sun is moving across the sky but it's really the earth that rotating on its axis and it take 24 hours to complete one rotation and which is why there are 24 hours in one day and for much of human history people believe earth to be flat but we know better but suppose if earth was flat the way we experience day and night as well as seasons would be different and one more difference would be that a flat earth would experience the same temperatures across its surface let's understand what is wind so we have all experienced the feeling of wind blowing against our bodies and it can range from a light breeze on a hot summer day to tornadoes even with the speed of hundreds of kilometer per hour but have you ever wonder how is wind formed so let us start with first defining what wind is so on earth we have an atmosphere composed of air molecules and the air is free to move in every way unless something is blocking it and for the purpose of our discussion we define 
विंड एज द मूवमेंट ऑफ एयर मॉलिक्यूल्स इन द एटमोस्फियर एंड और अर्थ इज सराउंडेड बाय अ ब्लैंकेट ऑफ एयर व्हिच इज कॉल्ड एटमोस्फियर एंड वी कैन फील एयर व्हेन इट ब्लोस but different kind of wind have different names like a gentle wind is called breeze whereas a strong wind is called gale very strong wind are called storm and storm that occur along with thunder and lightning are called thunderstorm now let's understand about humidity and rain have you ever felt the air just outside of a hot bath or shower it feels wet but you cannot see any water in the air and really there is water in the air but it is in the form of gas and this kind of water is called water vapor and even you can't see it but you can feel it so even the water vapor that is in the air is called humidity so the amount of water vapor present in the air is called humidity and water vapor rises up and condenses on dust particles present in the air into tiny droplets of water and as more as water vapor is formed more and more water droplets come together to form cloud and then in clouds these tiny droplets of water combine to form bigger droplets and when cloud become saturated it rains but in very cold areas where the air temperature falls below 0 degree celsius water droplets fall as snow now let's understand what is sea breeze and land breeze so as you know the sun heats up land as well as water bodies on earth and land heats up as well as cools down faster than water and this thing gives rise to sea breeze and land breeze especially in the coastal area so during the day land gets heated up which in turn heats the air above it and the hot air rises up from the land and the cool air from the sea flows in to take its place and this is known as sea breeze then at night the reverse process takes place so land cools down faster than the sea so now the air above the sea is warmer than the air above the land so the warm air rises above the sea and cool air from the land rushes towards the sea which is known as land breeze as you know more than 70% of the earth surface is covered with water and even water exists in nature as snow liquid water and water vapor and these states are interchangeable so let's understand what is evaporation so the heat of the sun changes water into water vapor by a process which is called evaporation and if we keep a bowl of water out in the sun the level of water in it goes down by evening and this is because the heat of the sun has evaporated some water and thus when the weather is very hot 
more water gets evaporated and so water vapor content in the air increases and this makes the weather humid now let's understand what is condensation so when we boil water in a pan and cover it with a lid we find tiny droplets of water on the underside of the lid and these drops have been formed because water vapor has changed into water so this process is called condensation and even clouds are formed when water vapor condenses into tiny water droplets so bigger water droplets falls as rain and on cold winter morning we see droplets of water on grass and leaves and this is called dew and these droplets are formed by the condensation of water vapor in the air now let's understand water cycle so in nature the process of evaporation and condensation take place continuously and water evaporates from lakes rivers oceans and other water bodies and it then condenses and falls down as rain or snow and this forms the water cycle now let's understand what is purification of water so as you know we should drink only clean water because dirty water can make us fall ill and water from taps can be dirty and impure also thus water used for drinking and cooking needs to be purified so we can do it with some ways like boiling so it is the simplest way to kill the germs found in water and brings water to a rolling boil for a minute to kill the germs present in it and by the time water starts to get hot enough to boil most of the germs in it die and boil water should be stored in clean and covered pots or bottle sedimentation and decantation is another method of purifying water and during sedimentation the liquid is left undisturbed for some time then the heavy insoluble solid settles down at the bottom and this process in which insoluble substance settle down is called sedimentation then the upper clear liquid is poured into another container without disturbing the insoluble solid and this process is called decantation even mud and water can be separated by sedimentation and decantation method filtration is another method of purifying water in filtration a solution containing insoluble substance is passed through a filter paper and on doing so the liquid passes through the filter paper while the insoluble substance get retained on the filter paper for example sand and water can be separated by filtration and an example of filtration used at home is the separation of tea leaves from tea using strainer so this is another method of purifying water chlorination is one of the method of purifying water it is a process in which chlorine is added to kill germs 
in dirty water and chlorine is a gas that kills germs and these days chlorine tablets are easily available that we can purify our water now let's solve question 3 give one word for the following first t h e the p r o c e w s process i n in w h i c h which i n s o l u b l e insoluble i m p u r i t i e s impurities s e w t l e settle d o w n down answer s e d i m e n t a t i o n sedimentation so the process in which insoluble impurities settle down is called sedimentation now next question t h e the p r o c e w s process i n in w h i c h which t h e the w a t e r water i s is g e n t l y gently p o u r e d poured o u t out a f t e r after s e d i m e n t a t i o n sedimentation so the question is the process in which the water is gently poured out after sedimentation answer d e c a n t a t i o n decantation now next t h e the p r o c e w s process i n in w h i c h which w a t e r water i s is c l e a n e d cleaned b y by p a double s i n g passing i t it t h r o u g h through a f i l t e r filter p a p e r paper so the question is the process in which water is cleaned by passing it through a filter paper answer f i l t r a t i o n filtration now next question a p r o c e w s process i n in w h i c h which c h l o r i n e chlorine i s is a double d e d added t o 2 k i double l kill g e r m s germs i n in d i r t y dirty w a t e r water so the question is a process in which chlorine is added to kill germs in dirty water answer is c h l o r i n a t i o n chlorination now next question t h e the a m o u n t amount o f of w a t e r water v a p o u r vapor 
P R E S E N T present I N N T H E the A I R air so the question is the amount of water vapor present in the air answer H U M I D I T Y humidity now next question T H E the B L A N K E T blanket O F of A I R air T H A T that S U R R O U N D S surrounds T H E the E A R T H earth so the question is the blanket of air that surrounds the earth answer a t m o s p h e r e atmosphere now let's solve question 4 give to example for each of the following first m e t h o d method o f of p u r i f y i n g purifying w a t r water so the question is a method of purifying water answer b o i l i n g boiling second example f i l t r a t i o n filtration so example of method of purifying water are boiling and filtration now next question f o r m s forms o f of w a t e r water so the question is forms of water answer i c e ice and second example w a t e r water b a p o u r vapor means water vapor so forms of water are ice and water vapor now next u s e s uses o f of w a t e r water so the question is uses of water answer f o r for s w i m m i n g swimming second example f o r for b a t h i n g bathing means uses of water are for swimming and for bathing means for swimming and for bathing we use water